Essay 17, Transfusion Like any true mirror, the gaze of God receives us exactly as we are, without judgment or distortion, subtraction or addition. Such perfect receiving is what transforms us. I still have two little slits of a scar on my left forearm, where they cut my skin when I was eleven and waited for the blood to clot. It took much longer than it should have. They thought it was leukemia, but it wasn't. Later that day, at that hospital in St. Joseph, Missouri, I had a blood transfusion which confirmed that my blood isn't normal. It is a blood disorder that would come and go throughout my life, causing my blood to cease clotting. I returned home to my brother, sister, and other friends and family, and they gathered around me and loved me in my paper-thin China doll state. My sister Tiffany is nine years older than me, and when I was young, I spent most of my time with her and her college friends. When I joined them at Koinonala College Ministry that met in the sanctuary of College Heights Christian Church, I stood in the pew and worshipped in a way I'd never been able to before. Tiffany lived with a few roommates at the girls' house, and right down the street on the corner was the guys' house where we played soccer in the yard and video games in the living room. I spent a lot of time in the backyard of her house. A hammock swing hung down from the giant tree off to the side of the back porch, and I'd pivot back and forth, listening to Nicole C. Mullins and singing at the top of my lungs to anyone who might be listening, a worship event for all to join. I loaded and unloaded their dishwasher, ate their food, and watched their movies. All that I knew was that these people took me in as their little sister, and after their transfusion, more love seemed to pour out over me. I remember Dusty, Jackson, Josh, and Jay, Trisha, and Charity, Bethany, and her brother Brandon. I remember the way they laughed with me, invited me to come along, honored my young girl's worshipful heart. One night, after I'd mostly recovered from the hospital stay, I packed my bag to spend the night with my sister and her friends. The weakness in my body must have shown through on my face because everyone was extra sensitive toward me that night, helping me up and down, watching me as I rested in the corner of the room, entertaining me as best they could. As a preteen trying to find her way in a frail and broken and beautiful world, they were the best friends I could have imagined for myself. All I needed was to be a part of them. From their friendship, I learned friendship myself. I learned what it means to serve and care for someone, what it means to live in community and walk side by side. I learned that it's possible to find a best friend and a sister. I learned that a blood transfusion is just one more reason to dig in roots and stay connected to the people who love you deeply, who take you tired skin and bones, ragged soul and all. The Prayer O oh God, we pray for ourselves, for our children, for our friends, that we find community, people whom we need at the right time and in the right way. But whether we pray it or not, I think you've already got that in mind for us. You birth us into the world with community in mind, and when we are in so much need of someone, you seem to call us back to you through the people who love us well and wholly. And when we are afraid or fragile or broken or simply undone, you meet us with human face and hands, flesh and heart, to hold us there and remind us that we are not alone. Hallelujah. We are not alone. Amen.